Google search campaigns enable you to publish ads which appear on Google search results page all around the world. These ads target people when they're actively searching for products and services. In this video, I'll show you how to set up a Google search campaign and drive traffic to your site within 10 minutes. To create a search campaign, advertisers create a list of keywords for which they want to appear and specify the maximum cost per click they're willing to pay to get a click to their website. So for example, if we do a search for iPhone, at the top here we have the shopping ads and underneath here we have an ad, we can tell that because it says sponsored, as an ad for the Apple site. And then underneath these, we have the organic results. These are the unpaid results. So as you can see for this search, all the content which is above the fold is actually paid. Let's do another search. Let's do a search for loan. Similarly, but you can see the shopping ads don't appear, but the first one, two, three, four results are actually paid search. And under that, you have the organic results. So from this, we can see that in order to get top placement on a page, you need to pay for ads. I'm now going to take you through the process of setting up your first Google Ads search campaign. Before you start, I recommend thinking about what your objectives are. For example, you should think about what your budget is and how many sales you expect to get for that budget. Start off small and increase your budget as you start to understand the system. To set up a campaign, you click Create from the Google Ads interface and then you choose Campaign. Here, when it asks you what your campaign objectives are, we know we want to set up a search campaign, so we're going to click Create a Campaign Without Gold's Guidance and then click Search Campaign. We have to choose a conversion goal. In this case, we're going to choose purchase, which has been set up on our website. The, the tracking has been set up to track purchases. That has been done from within tools and settings and then conversions. And then click continue. And then you select the results you want to get from this campaign. So in this case, we're looking to get website visits. We enter the website name. And then we need to give a campaign name. Now it's best to give a campaign which name which is descriptive. So it's a search campaign, it's focused on the UK, and it's for televisions. So that we immediately know, just looking at that campaign, what it is focused on, and then click Continue. The next thing we have to set is bidding. When you set up a Google Ads campaign, you can either use one of Google's automated bidding strategies, in that you will set the strategy for the bidding, and then Google will go and try and find you customers based on the targets you've set or you can use manual bidding. In my opinion, it's much easier to use an automated bidding system. It generally works much better. So the options you have here are conversions. That maximizes the number of conversions you get for your budget. Conversion value, that focuses on the actual value of the conversion and not on the number of conversions. Clicks, that tries to get you the maximum number of clicks for your budget. Or impression share, that maximizes the number of eyeballs and number of people who see your ad. So if we click conversions, we can also set a target cost per action here. We can, in this case, we can say, okay, we want a target cost per action, which is 10 pounds per conversion. And Google will try and go and find customers at that level. If we were to select, select conversion value and we do, a, we, it would be a return on ad spend. And this will be a percentage. So that means if we put in 500%, that means that for every pound we spend, it would try and get five pounds worth of sales. Then there's an option for customer acquisition. When you have a campaign, you have the option of spending more to acquire new customers than for existing customers. So if we, we click that option, then we can say, okay, bid higher for new customers than for existing customers. Um, and we'll set how much extra we think, how much extra value we think we get um, over the lifetime of a customer. In this case, it's defaulted to £20.45. That means when you make a sale, it will add in that amount of, of value to a customer and bid more accordingly. Alternatively, you can bid up for new customers. So what that means is it'll treat all customers as new customers and presume that they won't come back. So let's click only bid for new customers. The next option is networks. Google ads appear not only on the Google search results page, but they also appear on Google search partners and also Google's display network. The display networks help you reach people as they browse millions of websites, apps, and Google's own property, for example, YouTube and Gmail. Search partners are other search sites which use Google's algorithm and also use Google's advertising system. If you want to increase your reach, it is best to select all networks. However, you need to monitor this because it can be that Google, the search partners and display networks have a lower performance. You just select the locations where your, your adverts are going to be targeted. Google runs a system which works all around the world. 
you can target all countries and territories, your local market, and in this case, United Kingdom, or you can specify where you want your ads to appear. It is best to do targeted ads for the location you're targeting. So if you were targeting all countries and territories, that would be targeting countries with lots of different languages and also different customer behavior. And you should have specific adverts for these people to get the best performance. If we wanted to choose a specific location, we could enter it here. I'm going to choose London. You can also exclude location. So let's choose Islington. And we could exclude that. So we've included London, but we've excluded Islington. The next option is to select the languages that people speak. You should really be targeting the, the language of your advert. So I'm going to put English. Audience segments enables advertisers to, um, to target specific segments. It could be that you find that particular segments perform better, so you want to bid more for those segments. You can create your own segments, or you can use segments that Google has um, created for you. So if we look at these segments here, Shopify customers, that's one that we created. And there's also pet supplies, baby products, and that's Google has, has created these segments by looking at your products and suggesting segments to you that you might want to monitor. There's two options here. You can do targeting or observation. The first now is the reach your campaign to selected segments. And the second is observation where you just monitor the performance of them. Best to start off with observation and then move on to targeting when you have more data in the system. Under the more settings tabs, there's some more advanced settings. So the first is ad rotation. By default, if you create multiple ads, Google will rotate those ads to find the best performing ones. And it will then serve the more customers to those best performing ads. That's a very sensible choice, but if for some reason you don't want that, you can turn it off. If you want, you can have a start or an end date for your campaign. For example, if you have a um, sale that you're running or a promotion, or you can just have it running indefinitely. Ad schedules means that you can, you can turn your ads on and off at different points of the day. If as you get more data into your campaign, you can see what times work and you may find that certain times of the day just don't work and you just want to exclude your ads at those times. Once you've completed with your network settings, click next. The next step is to create your keywords and your ads. Google has recently launched AI tool, which enable you to generate a lot of this content automatically. So on this page, we enter the URL and also some information about the business, and it will generate the keywords and the ads automatically. We can then review what it has created. So let's click generate. So at this point, it's now looking at the site and it's going to generate keywords, which it thinks are relevant for our site. So it's come up with a list here, just a few keywords. These are so-called broad match keywords, which means that Google will show your ads for a range of different searches around these keywords. So for example, on baby products, it could be baby newborn products. It could be baby products for newborns. And Google uses machine learning to match your ads against things that things are relevant. Then once you've got some traffic into your ads, you can look at the search results, see what your ads are being displayed for and decide which searches you want to start to exclude. Next step is to look at the ads. Under keywords are the ad information. You can see it's already been populated with some information from the website. We now need to actually just review this information and see how relevant we think it is to our website. Google search ad is made up of a number of different sections. You should carefully fill these in. As you fill in, Google gives you a score at the top, telling you how well it thinks you have filled in this information. This is given as the ad strength at the top, and you can see it gives you a little score. You should aim for an ad strength of excellent. Whilst you can only have two headlines displayed at one time, you can enter up to 15 and you can enter up to four descriptions. So here I've got a range of um, headlines. Remember that your headline should clearly state the product and service you're offering. So this is about a baby shop. So we've got UK baby store, one-stop baby shop, great range of baby stuff, great deals on baby stuff. That's about the offer that we've got. And down here, we've got more description, more calls to action. So I've got buy baby stuff with confidence for a leading baby store, next day delivery available, prices match daily, shop huge range of baby products. So we've got calls to action in there and also more information about the product. So we've got two things here. We've got the final URL. That would be the, the landing page that the customer goes to. That could be something like baby dash stuff. But the display path will be shown differently. And I've got here baby stuff, or this could be baby products. And that's just what is actually shown to the customer. At the bottom is information you can add to this ad, which Google uses to enhance your ad. For example, if it's, use, if it's using this ad on the Google Display app, it may use images or and your business logo. 
At the bottom also you can define the site links. These are links on your site which appear at the bottom of the ad. Once you've filled in all the sections of your ad and your ad strength is, is excellent, you should click next at the bottom of the page. Finally, we need to set a budget. The budget we set is the average daily budget that is averaged over a 30-day period. You may go over or under on a particular day, but over the, a 30-day period you won't spend more than the budget you've set. You need to be careful when setting a budget. If you set the budget too high, I've found in the past that Google goes a bit mad to begin with and spend lots of money on customers that then convert. I'd recommend starting with a low budget to begin with and then increasing. However, if your budget is too low and your, your ads are performing well, then you will miss out on customers. So we're going to start off with the Google recommended budget. Finally, we can review the settings and then publish the campaign.